Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatikillah a question was asked assalamu alaykum i pray this email finds you well i wanted to ask you in regards to saying amin behind a hanafi imam who does not say it after reciting al fatiha should we as followers still say amin behind him or should we refrain please advise jazakallah khairan so first and foremost, Imam Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions, he says, وَيُسْتَحَبْ أَتَأْمِينَ بَعْدَ الْفَاتِحَ وَالسُنَّةُ لِلْمُسَلِّينَ إِذَا قَالْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ and Yaqul Amin. So Imam Al Maqdisi, one of the great Imams of the Hanbali Madhab, mentions that it is recommended to say Ta'min, meaning to say Amin uh, after after Fatiha. And he said, and it is Sunnah. For the one uh, praying that when it is said, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين, that he should say, Amin. And so there's a lot of speech with regards to this, but... In relation to this topic, I just wanted to read a few ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, showing us that this is sunnah mu'akkida. You know, this is what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam did, and this is what the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in did. And then we'll talk a little bit about the hukum in relation to your question. So it's mentioned in a hadith from Abi Huraira. رضي الله تعالى عنه قال إذا آمنا الإمام فآمنوا فإنه من وافق تأمينه تأمين الملائكة غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه رواه جماعة. so a group of the محدثين narrated the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if the Imam says Ameen then the people behind him uh, either that, that if the Imam uh, makes uh, says Ameen Ameen that the people behind him say Ameen and then if they say it and it is in agreement with the saying of Amin with the angels, then their sins will be forgiven. All the sins that they did prior will be forgiven. Qala ibn Shihab, kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul Amin. Wa fi ruwayta Ahmed wa Nisa'i idha qala imam غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين فقولوا آمين فإن الملائكة تقول آمين وإن الإمام يقول آمين فمن وافق تأمينه تأمين الملائكة غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. so in a, a, a narration Ibn Shihab, he mentioned, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, or used to make, uh, say, Amin. And in a narration in, uh, that was collected in Ahmed and Nisa'i, it states, the Messenger of Allah said, if, that, if the Imam says, you know, when he reads in Fatiha, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين, then say, and this is fi'l amr, فقولوا آمين. So then say آمين when the imam does this. For verily the angels, they say 
uh, Amin. And if the Imam says Amin, then whoever agrees with his, you know, says Amin in accordance, you know, in agreement at the same time he says Amin, uh, and the and the angels, then the sins that they did, uh, that that proceeded, will be forgiven. And there's many many ahadith. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, وَقَدْ تَقَدَّمَ عَنْ بِلَالٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ قَالَ لِلنَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لِأَنَّهُ قَالَ لِلنَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لَا تَسْ تَسْبَقْنِي be amin. I think this is a uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It seems it's a, it perhaps is a, a typing mistake that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Do not precede me in saying amin." You know, so of course the musallim should not precede the imam, and there are many many narrations. The hadith of Aisha radiallahu taala anha. And she said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to uh, open, uh, begin the prayer with the takbir, takbir to ihram, you know, the beginning uh, takbir, Allahu Akbar, and he would begin by reading Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Surah Al Fatiha, and then if he said Ghayr al Maghdubi alayhim wa dhalin, he said Amin. Uh, and this is narrated in Akhrajuhu Ahmed, uh, Abu Dawood, Wal Hakam, Wal Bayhaki, Fi uh, Sunan Al Qubra. So the Shahid is, is we know that this is very firm, fr uh, firmly established on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the saying of Amin, and that the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in said Amin, and there's other narrations, narrations of the Salaf, and as Imam Ibn Qudama mentioned that this is uh, mustahab, and there's many other things to say about the hukum. But as far as related to your question, so we've established the practice. We know that this is the practice. With it being something that is mustahab, uh, the ulama they mention that if it, uh, if that the person's going to be afraid of fitna. Okay, so if you're praying behind a Hanafi Imam, uh, and and the Hanafi uh, Ahnaf, they're from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So we have to learn. So we have to make sure that we understand that when we talk about Hanafi, uh, Shafi'i, uh, Maliki, Hanbali, we're talking about Ahl Sunnah. We're talking about those people. Uh, you know, Salafi Madhab. We're talking about the Salafi. Madhab. However, we, when it comes to the madhahib, we take that which we believe to be the most sound view. And that would be, of course, ulama differ and there's various, various reasons why they differ. But we don't restrict ourselves to one madhahib. Uh, but Ahl Sunnah looks for the tarjih. They look for the most, what they believe to be the most correct opinion or in accordance with the adilla and surely with this we know but as the ulama mentioned that this is mustahab so this is a very well established practice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to say amin out loud when the imam is reading out loud so if again you're in a masjid and the imam is hanafi you know and he's a strict follower of the hanafi madhab or whatever the case may be and you are afraid of fitna Meaning, perhaps the whole masjid, maybe you're in Pakistan, maybe you're in the West somewhere, and the masjid is predominantly followers of the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa and fiqh. And they perhaps can be muta'asib, you know, they can be very uh, prejudiced with regards to that. And at times, people even violent. I know people have moved their fingers, and people have grabbed it during the prayer, because they felt that that was impermissible, that that, that was not from the sunnah, although it, it, there's narrations that illustrate that that is from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So because of their belief, they actually grabbed his finger. So anyhow, if you're afraid of fitna, 
You're afraid that it could lead to violence. You're afraid that it's going to cause a lot of controversy and problems in the masjid. And it's something that's mustahab. It's something that's recommended. It's not something that's wajib. Uh, then the al uh, afdal a turk. It's better to leave that uh, practice uh, in order to keep the jama'ah together. Or say it uh, lightly. Say it so it's not, uh, maybe so it's not going to, unfortunately, disturb the other musallim because they are not accustomed to that. Especially the general Muslims if they're not really well educated, but they know this is how they're, they've been taught and their fathers were taught and they don't know any better and you're afraid of fitna, then you uh, it is best to leave it, especially when it is something which is not wajib. And so in that situation, you, you have to look at, uh, you know, what's going to be aslah, what's going to be more uh, beneficial. And I'll tell you, just relating to you, uh, a real situation that I had when I lived in Yemen, especially the first time I lived there, and when I moved to Sana'a, to the, the capital city, and there you had a mix, you know, you had a, a lot of Zaydiyah Shia, you know, it's a, it has a long history there. And they're closer to Ahl Sunnah. They, they're Aqidah, they have some Bid'ah, but they uh, are closer to Ahl Sunnah. They don't, uh, they may make some Bid'ah with regard to the Imams. You'll hear in their Idhan, uh, Salat al Khair, Hayya al Khair al Amal. You know, come to the good deeds. This is in their Adhan. You'll, you'll hear, see, hear and see practices. And one of the practices that they may, that they do not do, they don't believe in wiping over the socks. And this is probably a, a comment, of course, uh, probably all the Shia sects are share this. But they are one of the lightest, uh, as far as the Shia are concerned, of one of, one of the sects of Shia. And... You know, a lot of the Masajid, you may not know where you pray. And I remember sometimes I would end up in, you know, it'd be time for Salat and I'd go to their masjid. You know, it'd be one of their masjids. And I, I really didn't know at that time. And even with that, the prayer was valid. You know, they had no bid'ah mukaffara. But I remember because I, would, I had khufs on and I was coming from America and had khufs and, you know, we're, you know, thinking the sunnah and this and this and this, but they used to really, I used to have problems and I had very little Arabic at that time. I had some Arabic and I can remember many times getting in arguments or they would be yelling at me. They would be in, in the masjid and I would just be like this one lone soldier wearing my khufs and everybody's taking off their, their socks and stuff like this. And they would walk through puddles and many of the masajid there in Sana'a, they used to, and I guess these probably the Shia because they believed that uh, maybe the feet, uh, uh, you know, something with washing the nudges. So you go to make wudu and they would have sitting, standing, nasty water that they would come out after they make wudu and every and you'd have to walk through this pool of nasty water before you go into the masjid. This is sitting water that's been there for who knows how long, but this was their practice. So you'd have to endure that one way or another. But the fact that I didn't take my socks off, I would have all these elderly men yelling at me in Arabic and, and just upset. You know, alhamdulillah, I never got in any fights or anything like this. But I used to say to them, because I, I had limited Arabic, I said, La ta'ar of sunnah, la ta'ar of sunnah. I said, you guys don't know the sunnah, you don't know the sunnah. I used to, I can remember this. And so these are uh, situations. So it's it's good to have hikmah when you're in situations like that, especially if it's something that's that you're afraid is going to cause fitna. And number two, uh, more importantly, is that it's not something wajib. To leave the wajib for uh, something, uh, another practice, which is mubah or what have you. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.